Illinois State comes into Carbondale, one of the youngest teams in the league and always dangerous under coach Dan Muller and visiting the Southern Illinois Salukis. Talk about young, 87% of their scoring comes from freshmen and sophomores. We'll see what they have for the Redbirds, the Salukis hosting today. We welcome you to Carbondale on a chilly day at Banterra Center. The Missouri Valley Conference men's basketball game of the week. The Valley on ESPN. Southern Illinois hosting Illinois State. And inside, courtside with Rich Zavosik, I'm Tom Ackerman. Two teams that, yes, are very young, but led by coaches, Z, who know how to build programs. And during this challenging time, that's exactly what they're setting out to do. Southern Illinois, 90% of their scoring, freshmen and sophomores. Meanwhile, Illinois State, not a senior to be found on their roster. Young guys learning on the fly, learning from their mistakes, and getting better. They have a good sophomore, DJ Horn, the guard for the Redbirds. Terrific shooter, averaged 20 points a game against Missouri State last weekend in their two games. Ninth in the country in three-pointers, and almost three three-pointers per game. He can really fill it up. He can change a game in a matter of two or three possessions. And on the other side, he can light it up from the outside. That's Lance Jones. He's going to have to pick up the scoring with the absence of Marcus Demas. Coming off the 13-point performance against Missouri State, had a huge game in their win against Northern Iowa, 27, including seven threes, and he is going to be counted on big here this afternoon for the Salukis. Dan Baller, head coach at Illinois State, now in his eighth season. He's led the Redbirds to a share of the regular season title back in 2017. He's got a young team now, and as a matter of fact, this is the least experienced team in Illinois State history with no seniors on the roster and just a few juniors. And the tip goes to Illinois State wearing home whites, even though they're playing on the road. That's because the home team is wearing black jerseys today for blackout cancer. We'll talk more about that as we go along with Rick Savosic, Tom Ackerman. Glad you're with us for Valley Basketball, SIU and Illinois State. An early three-point attempt is in and out for Iman Washington, the freshman from Atlanta. And SIU is ready to go. Here are our starting lineups from Prairie Farms. Presentation of Prairie Farms, dedicated farmers, happy cows, real milk. And SIU taking on this Illinois State starting five of Jai Washington and Rios. And it's an early bucket for Filowich for SIU. And he's part of that starting five on the Saluki side with Trent Brown for Plank and Harvey and the excellent guard Lance Jones. Had a tough shooting day against Missouri State in his last game. And now DJ Horner delivers on the other side for Illinois State. This is going to be an up and down game. Southern Illinois going to play man to man. Illinois State can fix it up, show it zone, and get the knock away. One with the steal on the other end, and a foul is called as Warren went in for the line. Let's get your keys to the game, Coach Z, a production of the holiday in Carmel. For Southern Illinois, it's KYP. Know your personnel. you got to know who the drivers are, who the shooters are. And then defensively, it's inside-out activity. We saw in that first possession, they went inside the Filowich, no double team. He scores. Illinois State communicate and locate. What I mean by that is they're going to play man, they're going to play zone. Southern Illinois is going to try and spread this, shoot the three. You got to be talking, find the shooters at all times. So to the free throw line, Horn knocks him down, and Illinois State and Southern Illinois are going head-to-head -head here today. This should be fun. We have a 4-2 lead. As you mentioned, there will be a quick pace to it. We have two programs that are learning on the fly. SIU playing without its best player, Marcus Damask, as Fulwich wasn't able to get the rebound off that shot. Horn had it. He's had the ball in his hands quite a bit early on and will throughout the afternoon. Jai for three. And here comes SIU on the run with Lance Jones. Mary State is a better team in transition. They're quick off the bounce. They can spread you out. Southern Illinois is going to have to do a good job in transition defense. Phillips looking for Jones and has him. And he will be on the other side. Again, up and in. SIU ties the game at four. Coach Dan Muller is not going to like that. 
that. Too many inside attempts already for Southern Illinois. Let's see what this Illinois State can do on the next trip down the floor as SIU playing that trademark scrappy defense from their coach Brian Mullins. This ball is loose. Fillerwich has it. Jones hit ball up from just about anywhere as he's proved already this season. State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. One of the great venues in college basketball, Banterra Center here at SIU, but Illinois State coming out with a terrific early burst and taking a 9-4 lead over the Salukis. Well, Tom, they've done it on the defensive end. They've already forced three turnovers and they have sped up Southern Illinois in the half court. I mean, the Salukis would like to run in transition if the opportunity is there, but in the half court, they want to try and move the basketball, swing the defense, try and get it inside to the big guy, Filowicz, but very tough to do when you're trying to push it inside on the first or second pass. That's when the defense is at its strongest. Brian Mullins right there trying to deal with DJ Horn already with six points, two steals, and pacing this Illinois State team up nine to four. And with the ball, there's Horn, number zero with the headband and the basketball. And crossing the timeline for the Illinois State Redbirds. Winners of two conference games are two and 11 in league play. They go inside to Jai, and it's 11 to four. Jai with the basket inside. Illinois State's making it look easy right now. A quick pick up the full court. Trying to pick on the young man. Dalton Banks, the freshman out of Wisconsin. And Banks has had a nice season. Scored 12 points against Missouri State earlier in the week. Now Filowich goes in and scores, and he's fouled. That's exactly what they needed. 
Good patience coming out of that timeout. Filowich is going to do an excellent job posting up. Take a look. He gets Jai on his back, and he uses that girth to just keep Jai from being able to reach over and block the shot. Chance for a three-point play. Kyler Filowich has been a pleasant surprise, I'd say, for Saluki fans. Knew that he'd be a factor, but he has been one of their better players. That's one hole in his game, though, is free throw shooting. As Filowich you know, struggles from that area, shooting just 50% this season. So an 11 6 game, Illinois State trying to build on that lead. Horn, one of the best three point shooters in America, number nine in the nation, knocks one down. And Horn is feeling it. You're going to have to make him put the ball on the floor. The Raleigh, North Carolina native. Making things happen for Illinois State. Now he commits a foul as he gets Trent Brown. And Illinois State playing this zone, and it's not a sit back and wait type zone. It's a very aggressive, predicated on ball pressure. Very, very similar to playing man to man, just playing an area, but the same type of ball pressure is of utmost importance. Filowich gets it back outside, and Banks hits the three. Dalton Banks. The freshman from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And it's a five point game again. Banks has been a very nice addition to this program. Three ball, Washington in and out. And for Illinois State, going up empty on that end. We'll have to defend against what's an inevitable SIU run. They can do that. They have a lot of shooters on this SIU team. Filowich trying to draw a double team and instead got it to Brown and a turnover. And on the other end, the miss and the miss dunk, but a scramble and a recovery. And Illinois State retains possession. Perfect example. Don't assume your teammate's going to make the layup. Everybody run the floor. Strong finds the shooter, Boyd. With the miss and Illinois State up by five, seven minutes gone here in the first half. Three ball for Plankin, no. SIU shooting 44%, one of four from beyond the arc in the early going. Now a foul is called on Trent Brown, trying to wrestle the ball away from Washington. And they're going to get Devonzo with that. Brown was in the vicinity, but they're going to call Devonzo with the foul. So Washington will take a seat. We get that line change for Illinois State. Three guys coming in. I mean, he's famous for it. The Blackhawks fan, Dan Muller. <laughs> he loves his hockey changes. Well, think about this 12 different players this year have scored in double figures. So. He is using a lot of his roster every single night out. Horn came out of the game also. And delivering on this end, Illinois State with Boyd. And Strong took a seat also in that change, and they brought in some new faces. Antonio Reeves has always been a, a player going back to last year that was fascinating to watch, watch him grow. He's out there trying to stay with Harvey right now. Brown reverses it. Banks. Filowich muscles his way in for SIU. SIU doing a good job of not being shaken up by the changing defenses of Illinois State. Redbirds up by five here at SIU. And now an offensive foul is called as Reeves went crashing into the defender. And that's where we pause for the moment with Illinois State leading by five on the road at SIU. The Valley on ESPN. Welcome back to Banterra Center. SIU and Illinois State, part of the Valley action today. Look at that. Loyola making a statement, beating Drake 81-54. 
We got some good ones to come. Bradley at Missouri State. I'm heading to the second game of that series tomorrow. Valparaiso at UNI. Part of Valley action today. Let's take a look at our standings. Presentation of Zervita, the Ramblers. Boy, they look like the Final Four Ramblers. They certainly did. It was a close game at halftime, and then they just took control right out the gate in the second half. But Drake playing out with playing without Tank Hemphill. They'll get a chance tomorrow to, to tie that series up. But how about Missouri State, Indiana State, both kind of lurking in, in that third, fourth position. You know, big, big series coming up. And as you mentioned, Missouri State, Bradley, very big series. Yeah, I talked to Dana Ford yesterday for a little bit. He said that, you know, beyond Loyola and Drake, it's anybody. That, that the rest of the pack, anybody can beat anybody in this league. And you know, they believe that they are still one of the better teams in this league. They can continue to compete as the miss on this end for SIU. But there is no questioning the top two. Loyola and Drake are terrific. And Loyola with a huge win today is the turnover on this end for Fleming. That was definitely a statement win for him. I mean, obviously Drake had been undefeated before their loss to Valparaiso and getting most of the attention, but Loyola streaking right now. And it's gonna be an interesting arch madness here in less than a month. Is it ever? Harvey for SIU, they trail by five. Good toss inside. Dembele with the basket for the Salukis. And just a nice pass by Harvey, always with his head up, looking for the open man. Dembele shouting out defensively. Fleming throws inside. Now back out. And a three goes down for Jai. Big and, three by Jai. And if you're wondering if Coach Muller wants him to shoot the three, he's missed the first one, didn't say anything against it. That's the difference in this game now. The five man steps out and shoots the three. Jai with five points. Oh, he reached up. The long arm of the law of Jai. They have a game. Fleming. They try to get it back outside, and they do. And that three is missed by Boyd. They made a shot earlier. And Illinois State spread the scoring fairly well. Horn with nine. Jai with five. Three for Strong, two for Boyd. This SIU team. Trying to answer on the other end and can't from Devonzo. Their leading scorer is Filowich with six. And SIU has done a good job of slowing the pace down. I think Illinois State playing at that frantic pace at the beginning. That's to their advantage. Three balls splashed home by Sissoko. I tell you what, let me play for Dan Muller. Everybody gets a chance to shoot the three. Hey, that's fun. They like shooting the three. Amazing. He was such a great defensive player. <laughs> but hey, offensively, if you if you guard on the defensive end, I'll let you play how you want to on the offense. Devonzo goes in strong, can't get that one to fall, and Jai gets the rebound and bodies flying everywhere. And back up to get back on defense. Dembele for SIU. Fleming guarded by Banks. Now it's Reeves. It's past Harvey and runs right into the defender. An offensive foul is called. So Reeves gets whistled for the foul, and that's his second foul. And as he came in, he, he faked directly in front, like that was going to get Harvey to move. And Harvey just took it right in the chest. Reeves picks up the foul and has to have a seat on the bench. Terrific play by Harvey. It's a nine point lead for the Redbirds. They were trying to add more. Now they break a little pressure with Filowich, gets it over to Banks. Lance Jones back into the game for SIU. Comes off a screen, switches direction. Banks to Verplanken. Jones, he'll shoot it from there every once in a while. Filowich away from the basket. 
This has really been a strong defensive effort by Illinois State on top of their good offense. And off the knee of Banks, and it's Illinois State ball. How about this intensity? Can they keep that going? Tom, to your point, it is amazing what Dan Muller has done with this group. Sometimes you get into this point of the year and you haven't had some success and you start to play on the defensive end like it doesn't matter. But right now they are playing their tail off on a defensive end. They have bought in. It's Horn. Always dangerous. Jai's already hit a three. Drive there. Oh, the no look pass inside to Sissoko. Great pass by Strong. Whether it was a no look pass or he was looking away from a hand in his face. Illinois State's on an 8 0 run in the last three minutes. Jones able to crack the defense that time, but there to make the play was Jai. Now Jai stands 6 9 in that lane. And Horn. No, can't get it to go. I want to put that Illinois State bench into a frenzy. They're all standing <laughs> up over there. They're into it. Salukis are all seated. Illinois State standing, most of them. Why wouldn't they be up 11? Filowich, good feed, good cut, good bucket by Trent Brown. Uh, the defensor, defensive man turned his head. And Brown took advantage of it. Excellent cut by Trent Brown. Get it down to nine. Horn guarded by Jones. Such a great matchup. Two players we featured in our open. Now Horn gets around Jones, and a foul is called. Nope, they're going to call a travel. So that is where we are at 6.33 in the first half. A little look at Trent Brown right here. It's not about shooting the three. Sometimes you got to be the back cut assassin. And that's exactly what Trent Brown was on that position. Today's State Farm NBC Scholar Athlete of the Game is Southern Illinois' Rachel McGuire, a volleyball senior setter from Bloomington, Illinois. McGuire has a 3.79 cumulative grade point average in biological sciences and led the Valley and the NCAA in 2019 with 13 kill assist dig triple doubles. When you want the real deal like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. There's DJ Horn. He has come alive in this game. Nine points for the Redbirds. He is doing it at both ends of the floor. Three steals here this afternoon. We're going to take a look at the very first one. Picks his pocket. And he's going to get a nice finish after he jumps the passing lane. Nine points, three steals. Nice job of sliding to the open spot to get that three point shot open. D.J. Horn on three of six shooting, one of four from beyond the arc, never shy to shoot the three. Career three-point percentage of 43%, 12th highest among all active players in Division I and the highest among all sophomores. D.J. Horn, Filowich lost the handle briefly. Jai guarding him, and the big man tries to back down the defender, and it'll stay here. You mentioned before, Jai is 6'9", but especially long arms. And he does a nice job of just keeping him up and walling up against Filowich. That is a matchup to watch in the paint. As for Plankin now has it for SIU to Banks. Trent Brown's put together some good games this season. Filowich with a shot clock at two, took an extra step. Travel and a turnover back to Illinois State. Tom, that was freshman anxiety. He knew the shot clock was running down. Didn't know exactly how much time he had. Got a little anxious. Shuffled his feet. Second turnover by Filowich in this game. Seventh for Southern Illinois. Illinois State has turned the ball over five times. Strong with two defenders tracking him. Well, they whip it around the perimeter. 
And it's Jai again. Oh, he knocks it down again. Abdu Jai has a couple of threes. And Illinois State expands the lead to 11. Now Brown tries to answer. He does. Trent Brown hits the three for the Salukis. First time SIU has gotten a wide open look in a while. SIU's tried to turn up the heat defensively, but they solve it again. This three goes down for Strong. Illinois State's spacing offensively is phenomenal right now. Really are, and the pass has been effective. Great passing around the perimeter. Keeping this team off balance. Filowich with a two right there, and he's fouled. And lets out a scream on that terrific three-point opportunity. This is good recognition by Verplank, and he sees the mismatch, and Strong just catches him a little bit, or excuse me, Fleming on the way down. He's going to pick up the foul. A little careless on Fleming's side, but good job by Filowich to finish. And we'll take a look at Kyler Filowich, the Canadian Crutwig, they call him. Well, he, that's the similarity. I see it now that he'll have to improve on that, the free throws, but all those categories that he fills up, and you know how good of a passer Crutwig is, but I just love the fact that their offense really goes through Filowich. You can see that. Well, he's got great bloodlines. His mother, part of the Canadian national program, one of the hardest workers on this team. Filowich from Winnipeg, and he grabs the rebound. And now Lance Jones trying to get this SIU team rolling. They're down nine. Jones floats it in to Filowich. Now an open three for Verplanken. And the rebound goes to Washington for Illinois State. Fleming, he'll put one up in the lane. Gets his own rebound. Nope, out of bounds. Off SIU last touched. Like the hustle play by Fleming. The shooter always knows where the ball is going to come off. Fleming knew it was short. Almost had an offensive rebound and a putback, but knocked out of bounds. I'll tell you, this Illinois State team is interesting to me. Now, they have a record of 5 and 14, 2 and 11 in conference, but the more you look at them, the more you understand their youth and the potential. There are some players who have a lot of confidence on this team as Horn's one of them, and he fires it over to Washington, and he's another one. Plays with great confidence. You can just see something going on there. Look at this uh, chance inside, but getting it back. They have been very aggressive, strong, at the shot clock expiring, can't get it to go. And here comes SIU the other way. Now that you have Filowich out of the game, it's more a, a five out. Devonzo will start in the low block, but don't be surprised to see him end up on the perimeter. Jones with the miss, and yeah, Devonzo's known to hoist a three now and again. He's already taken one today. SIU's two of nine from beyond the arc. Illinois State's already knocked down five threes. They're five of 15. Washington, good toss inside. Great look. Basket good. And it's Andrews with that one. It's a heck of a catch by Andrews in traffic. Nice catch, good finish. First bucket for Andrews to go along with his three rebounds. Illinois State doing a good job of backline guys telling frontline guys where shooters are. Oop, they missed one. There's one, Dalton Banks. <laughs> uh, three ball goes down for Banks. And the freshman delivers. 87% of SIU's points come from freshmen and sophomores. You say 87%? 87%. Only to be outdone by Illinois State, 90%. Yeah, that's right. And a basket on the other end by Sissoko. Illinois State has taken control of this game from the get-go. They're up by 10.
18 Final Four trips. Nine National Players of the Year. Legendary coaches and players. An iconic postseason tournament. The Valley runs deep. Illinois State by 10 against Southern Illinois on the road as the Valley continues on ESPN. And stay tuned for our halftime report, a presentation of State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We have a nice profile on Trent Brown for halftime. We'll, of course, check our recap and stats with Rich Savosic, Tom Ackerman, courtside at SIU's Banterra Center. Van Muller has made a conscious decision before this game. He's going to play basically five outs. Spread the floor. You see Jai go from screening on the low block to popping out to the three-point line and knocks it down. And he's guarded by Filowich. That is a tough guard when Filowich has got to run all the way out to the three-point line. And the strategy to play five guys out, keep it quick, try and make it a frantic pace has paid off for the Redbirds. Filowich is back out there in the defensive assignment drawn by Alston Andrews. And that one rattles home for Verplanken. Oh, what a big basket that was. Cuts it to seven. Communicate and locate. You got to know where the shooters are. You got to talk about it. Verplanken, one of the best three-point shooters for SIU. That changes things a little bit. Washington tries to answer and hits. And on the other end, another huge basket. Because don't you <laughs> don't you want to get it down to single digits at halftime if you're SIU? You want to get it manageable here. Uh, Illinois State goes up by 10. You certainly do. But the key is will Illinois State stay on the aggressive, offensive mind thinking? Harvey with the miss. Illinois State 6 of 16 from out there. And tipped up no. On his own miss was Dedrick Boyd. And a steal. And back to Boyd. And gets the lay in. Dedrick Boyd and Illinois State off and running up by 12. You can see why Dan Muller was defensive player of the year in this league. His team is playing like five Dan Mullers. They have five steals today, three of them from DJ Horn. Harvey in the half court SIU bringing the shot clock down to five Harvey tries to keep his dribble and in traffic couldn't find anything Illinois State is swarming and they are going to look for the last shot and perhaps one of the few possessions they'll take their time here in the first half Dan Muller has to be pleased with what he's seen here in this first half as he slows things down. Shot clock and game clock right on each other. And they bring it down to eight seconds. And a whistle and a foul. It's on for Plankin, his first. Well, if SIU plays it right, Illinois State may not get a shot off. They have three more to give. Yeah, just three team fouls you can see there for Southern Illinois. So. Get ready for some whistles here. See what they do on this out of bounds play. Strong. And a foul called on Trent Brown. 5.6. Okay, you got 1.4. If we can get another 1.4. My math is correct. Uh, maybe they only get a shot with under two seconds to go. Whatever they can do and then get to the locker room, try to figure out how to turn this game around. It is a 12 point lead. Somehow escaping and nearly scoring was Boyd, and he's fouled on the shot attempt. And that so, is not what Brian Mullins wanted. He's telling his guys to foul early. And they had an opportunity right there in front of them, and they don't take it. And now he got a chance for a couple of free throws with Boyd. Mullins with arms folded in front of the SIU bench. It'll be an interesting halftime talk, let's say. And this is the tough thing, Tom, about no fans here. 
Normally the Banterra Center would be rocking and it's a home court advantage, but it's really taken away. It's like playing on a neutral court all year long. Yeah, this is one of the great buildings and that toss is too far and Illinois State ends the half on a 7-0 run has scored 13 points off turnovers and has a lead 40 to 26 at SIU Dan Muller's team surprising the Salukis on the road thus far. Illinois State on top of Southern Illinois, 40 to 26. State Farm halftime report continues. Courtside here at Banterra Center with Rich Zavosik. I'm Tom Ackerman. Coach, I mean, a 14 point lead. Illinois State doing everything right. Illinois State, much more pep in their step than the Salukis. Think about it. They've forced eight turnovers, they've grabbed five offensive rebounds. Forget about the fact that they're shooting 50%. They're just the quicker team right now. They are that. Let's take a look at our first half highlights. Presentation of Live by Lowe's St. Louis. And look at the performance by DJ Horn already with three steals. He set the tone early. Stealing a slam. And then Jai really good inside at the jumper. Then all of a sudden Horn spreads it out for the three. But hey, Lincoln's coming back. Lance Jones. The steal of his own and Filowich inside with a three point play. A terrific performance by Illinois State, though, early on, leading by 14. First half stats production of Zervita shooting 50% from the floor, Z, out rebounding the Salukis as well. And the bench points, they've just been rolling players off the bench. Oh, Dan Muller is pushing all the right buttons, he is substituting freely and the guys coming in are doing an excellent job of keeping the intensity to its peak. It's a good first 20 minutes for the Redbirds. Here's the question. What will the Salukis have in store for them coming out of the locker room? I got to think they'll be a fired up squad. We'll see and we'll have it for you coming up next. The Valley on ESPN is brought to you by Mercy. Your life is our life's work. We're back at Van Terra Center, and SIU has some work to do, trailing 40 to 26. Our first half recap, sponsored by Live by Low St. Louis. Want to experience laid back luxury, the heart of downtown St. Louis, adjacent to Ballpark Village? Visit livebylowshotels.com slash live by Low St. Louis, Missouri to book your hotel room today. The goal of the Blackout Cancer Game is to raise awareness and support cancer patients right here in the Southern Illinois region. So far, the Blackout Cancer Game has helped over 1,900 cancer patients and raised almost $800,000. In a normal year, the Jersey bid winners would get a meet and greet with the players, take a photo with the recipient after the game, this year, the basketball program has raised $10,100 to be donated to the Coach Kill Fund. That directly impacts and helps cancer patients in Southern Illinois with medical bills and treatments named after former SAU football coach Jerry Kill as blackout cancer started in 2011, partnered with the Southern Illinois Healthcare Foundation, and they've just done a wonderful job here. Again, you see the names on the back. You could bid to get a name placed on the back. Look at McGuire U. You like that on Filowich? I do. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> I go to the Final Four every year, yeah. and you'll see guys walking around with T-shirts that say McGuire U basketball. And for the longest time, I was like, who is that? I mean, how good of a team are they? And then somebody told me, oh, that's a fake Canadian university. <laughs> so it's very appropriate that Kyler Filowich is wearing McGuire U, and he is wearing it very proudly today and representing them very well here in the first half. Filowicz with eight points at the break on four of six shooting. He also has seven rebounds to lead SIU. He's had a really nice game pacing for a double double. And there he is. And he took his time using that left. Now he uses the right. Let's see if he can do the same thing here in the second half. Get his Saluki dogs back in it. Brian Mullins hands on hips watching his team. 
playing offense and down by 14 points. See how they respond here in the second half. Harvey finds an opening and misses the baseline. Jay, and now a whistle, and they're going to call uh, that the basketball <laughs> bin was still out there. Where's the manager? Get those basketballs out of there. <laughs> That's a hazard. So here we go, 40 to 26, Illinois State ball up by 14 points. And that's one way to slow Illinois State down. <laughs> that's <laughs> absolutely right. They probably pick up one of those and shoot a three. They have put up 16 three-point attempts and made six of them. Reeves gets blocked by Filowich. And last touch by Illinois State. SIU with a defensive stop. That's a good way to start. Nice job by Filowich. He doesn't try and reach in, just walls up. That is the Great Wall of China right there from Winnipeg. You can see Jai was the last one to touch it. For Plankin with it for SIU. Quick pass inside. Good drive. Good. Bucket by Lance Jones. Lance Jones shut out in that first half. Important for him to get on track. Good way to do it. Jai out beyond three. He's made a couple from out there. Now Reeves. Picked up by Verplanket. Jai against Filowich. Washington feeds Horn. And in and out for DJ Horn. Loose ball. Horn comes up with it. Quicker to the basketball, Tom. Such a good player and <laughs> makes SIU pay with a jump shot from about 15. You know, credit that one to Jai, who kept it alive, knocked it out front for Horn to recover. 14 point game again. Trent Brown. Open look. Illinois State, two minutes into this second half. Right where they were at halftime, up by 14 points. Reeves, no, and Filowich with a rebound. Here's Jones. Let's see if they attack with him again. They do draw the defense for Brown's open three. Won't go. It's a good decision by Jones. Open look by Brown. Horn pulls up in front of Filowich, who grabs the rebound. Illinois State doing a good job of getting back on defense, forcing jump shots. Jones missed from long range. Washington. Dumps one off for Jai. Tried to bounce it inside to Fleming. Washington with the loose ball. Gets his own rebound. Washington scores. My goodness, what a play. I like that player. And the freshman from Atlanta just showing some stick to activity. Picks up the loose ball. Doesn't make it first one, but the quicker of the two off the floor gets the offensive rebound. Iman Washington, the freshman from Atlanta. And he is a player to watch. A three point play completed by Washington. It is a 17 point lead for Illinois State on the road. This one off the hands of Jai. Nope, they're going to say off of SIU. Filowich, I think, last touched it. They're lucky on that possession. Trent Brown needed one more dribble to get a better angle to throw the ball into Filowich. That is SIU ball. And Banks, no. Rebound. Horn. Illinois State with a chance to expand this huge lead. Horn, that one was deflected by Jones. Jai against Filowich. Jai. Nope. And Banks back the other way for SIU. If you're SIU, you can't settle for a jump shot. Got to try and work the ball inside out at the very least. And a foul is called. Jai was in there against Filowich. Brian Mullins calls his team over. Former assistant at Loyola. Learning from one of the best, Porter Moser. You can just see him building this program piece by piece. Former player here, his toughness. He actually wrote a letter 
to the fan base thanking them for being who they are and for respecting the style of play and basically pledging that he will build a program to meet those desires. He is doing it the right way. High character kids and you know, right now they're playing as hard as they can. They just are, are one man short and a big one man in Marcus Damask. Absolutely right. That one in and out for strong, but look at the rebound. And a great rebounder he is, Mohorcic. And for that, they come back the other way with Reeves. And the lead is 19, and Brian Mullins has seen enough at the 16.02 mark. And how about Mohorcic? Doesn't play in the first half after getting 15 rebounds in the last game. Big offensive rebound, and he's got Illinois State up big. The 2021 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship returns to Enterprise Center March 4th through the 7th in downtown St. Louis. Local seating capacity restrictions will apply for this year's event. For more information, be sure to download the Arch Madness app or visit archmadness.com for details. Van Terra Center, Carbondale, Illinois. Dan Muller's team putting on a clinic today. They're up by 19 on SIU. This venue two hours from Enterprise Center not far from St. Louis Dan Muller conjuring up a little bit of his past actually averaged 10 points and over five rebounds in his career against the SIU Salukis Some great battles then these programs have a great history Devonzo with a little fake and a score that's how you come out of a timeout get a bucket attack the basket don't settle for jump shots you don't need home runs there's a lot of time left the lead is 17 horn a couple of defenders chasing him strong shot clock under 10 horn with the miss and sky for the rebound was Dembele and Mohorcic and it's going to be SIU ball. Timeout on the floor, 15 23 on the clock here in the second half. Brian Mullins' team looking up at a scoreboard, seeing him down by 17. Yeah. The Valley on ESPN and MVC student athletes positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mbc-sports.com/slash One Valley. We're at Pantera Center, Illinois State, on top of SIU by 17 players of the week. Isaiah Mosley, 21 and a half. In two games against Illinois State, Sheldon Edwards, the newcomer of the week for Valpo, averaged 15 and a half in that split against Drake. Had a terrific game, especially in the one that Valparaiso upset Drake. He is going to be an exciting player. Valparaiso just continues to get better and better as the year has gone on. And yeah, Mosley, what a great year he's had as the drive to the baseline, trying to feed Dembele with Jones. Dembele with the shot clock expiring can't get it to go rebound grabbed is making this second half appearance is Mohorcic and that is a rebounding edge for Illinois State here he's a good one he's got the ball there tries to feed there to Horn and Dembele came up with it I talked to Dana Ford yesterday about Isaiah Mosley and he said he just loves playing in games he's just a gamer <laughs> you know he just has shown up and he said he's also this year has just been a gym rat. They just can't get him away from the gym. He loves to practice, practice, practice. It's the miss there by Jones. Sky for the rebound with two Redbirds. Told you Mohorcic is a rebounding giant. He went after that against his own teammate. Smart enough to let it go. <laughs> there is Mohorcic. Very impressive player. Came off the screen, now got it in the block and was fouled by Dembele. 
Mohorchich, a 6'10 junior forward from Serbia. And Mohorchich played a year at Lewis College along with uh, SIU's Devonzo, former teammates. You can see that Illinois State does go with an international flavor to their roster. Mohorchich, one of four. So you're telling me they, they not only beat you, they beat you in five different languages. <laughs> Alex Kodoff from Russia is another one, is the miss there. And now a loose ball briefly, but Planken was able to keep it for SIU. Down by 17 points. Jai is from Senegal. And Sissoko is from Mali. On the Illinois State side. Devonzo to Filowich. And the Canadian missing there. It comes up with his own rebound. Now Banks back to Filowich for the basket. SIU cuts it to 15. Nice little slip pass by Banks through the defender. Mohorchich, yes. Count the basket. He's fouled as he goes into the right side and scores. Mohorchich is going to catch it in traffic. The old pick and roll. Good catch in traffic and the finish a chance for a three point play. You no, know, Tom, there's a lot of different ways that you judge coaches. Obviously, the, one of the first ways you judge a coach is wins and losses. Dan Muller has had Illinois State on the, the precipice a couple of times. He had a great run a couple of years ago, 17 and 1. And, and if you ask me, they probably got cheated out of the NCAA tournament. But the other way you judge him is how do guys handle the adversity and a guy like Mahorchich who sat the entire first half he came come back here in the second half with a ton of energy head was up he didn't pout you know and that is how you judge teams and their ability to grow and this Illinois State team has a chance to grow and become very good and I'll throw out one stat real quick here seven previous teams including this year in Illinois State history as we watch Washington a freshman knock it down have been without a senior four of those times the following year they were in either the NCAA tournament or the NIT tournament so if you're a Redbird fan take heart you got a chance they're going to grow and get better I agree with you Filowich is fouled there Washington hits that three as you're making that statement. I think that's important. I think Washington's going to be a really good player. Amon Washington, just based on what I'm seeing here from Atlanta, one thing he did right there before he hit that three, the pass was a little off target, and he really caught the ball nicely. I mean, it's one thing that gets a little overlooked, but it's the first thing that you learn in basketball is how to catch the ball. Exactly. And he received the ball so well and got himself in position to get off a quick shot. That is something that I think is really important to see in a young player like that. Oh, absolutely right. And as we watch Filowich at the foul line, knocks down that second one. And, you know, he's another perfect example for Southern Illinois. This is a young team. Filowich, who struggled from the line against Northern Iowa. When the game was over, everybody goes to the locker room. He he stays out and shoots more free throws because he wants to get better. And this team's going to get better. And when you look around this league, Loyola, Drake, top two teams, there's a reason. Very experienced, senior, junior, dominated. Strong all the way in and throws it down on the right side of the rim. Hello. Oh my. Wow. Josiah Strong. A little bounce from the 6 3 junior. DJ Horn on the sideline is loving it. Filowich and a foul on the floor. They get Mahorchich there. Woo. Strong with the big basket at 11 41 to go in the game. And the Redbirds by 21 points. Welcome back to Carbondale, Illinois State, and SIU here. Join us tomorrow for more MVC men's action when the Bradley Braves travel to Springfield to meet Missouri State. Coverage at 3 p.m. Central, the Valley on ESPN. I'll be there for that one. We're going to pull Dane and Hughes off of Super Bowl duty and uh, get him <laughs> back into the Valley telecast. Looking forward to 
calling that game with my pal Dane. And look at this, best in Illinois last eight years. These two schools right in there with Loyola and Illinois. And Loyola led by Porter Moser all eight of those years. Illinois State led by Dan Muller all of those years. So they have built very solid programs. And both guys have went through rebuilding processes. Or Plankin gets the back it, bucket uh, on that shot. For Plankin cuts it to 19, and Illinois State has just been running away here. Second chance points up 10 2. Points off turnovers, leading 16 to 2. And an alley oop jam as they continue to throttle SIU here in this second half. Wow. They have the pedal down, and Mohorcic with the rebound. Washington. Three point bucket for Dedrick Boyd, and Illinois State is up by 24. It is amazing. Southern Illinois came has come out of the last three timeouts, went inside, and then they settle for the jumper on the next possession. But watch this pass by Mahorch. It's looking like Bill Walton throwing the lob. Oh my. I thought he was throwing it into the stands. I'm telling you, Washington's a special player, goes up and throws it down. I mean, I thought he was going to dislocate his shoulder reaching back to grab that one. That was an unbelievable catch and finish. But Mahorchitz didn't even didn't even hesitate on the pass. Set play coming out of that timeout. And 59-35. Oh man, Washington with 11 points. Now tied with Horn atop the scoring with 11. I will say this, Tom. When I coached, I had a few of these nights, probably not enough of them, I'd right, still be coaching, but I had a few of these nights, just like Illinois, Illinois State, where everything is going right. You, know, you think that ball is going out of bounds, he's able to catch it, dunk it, they knock down a three the next possession. Just playing with a lot of a lot of fire. And they continue to Boyd as they just put the pressure on. Three ball, horn hits it. And it is a 62 35 lead. It's like a pool of piranhas. They smell blood in the water. SIU trying to get things under control. Banks blocked by Mohorcic. Rips it away from Devonzo. Horn with a great bounce inside. Sissoko. Terrific cut by Sissoko. People movement, ball movement. When both of them are going, you got good offense. Brown off the mark. Into the hands of Boyd, now to Horn. Who would have thought this? Illinois State with a chance to go up by 30 or more. Boyd. And the rebound goes to Devonzo. And that might that one might have been a little greedy. Devonzo can't connect on the other end, and Sissoko grabs the rebound. And we're going to get another game here tomorrow, so you got to make sure that you finish this one out strong, regardless of your Illinois State or Southern Illinois. Illinois State Redbirds, Boyd. Goes in strong. Mohorcic with the basket, and he's fouled. He has come out on fire here in this second half and playing with fire. Trent Brown gets clipped on the drive by Boyd, but Mohorcic, oh, he could have 15 rebounds in this second half. <laughs> he has five to go along with four points. And he has played all in this second half. So four points, five rebounds in seven minutes. So the officials are going to the monitor. They're going to review the, the drive by Boyd and where Brown gets clipped in the head. We're going to take another look at it. Might need to roll it back just a little bit further because the, the question is, did Boyd hit Brown intentionally, which would raise 
Raise it to a, a see flagrant on the right foul. side of the lane here. Yep. Ooh, he does clip it. I, I'd say that's a tough call at that speed. If we get the virtue or is it benefit a, of a slow motion, maybe it's not. Because Brown reaches in a little bit. Hard to tell. Is he intentionally trying to move him out of the way with his elbow, or was it incidental? Nah, I tell you, it's it's more a natural move that comes when Brown tries to to reach in to knock at to knock at the ball. Doesn't look great. No, it looks. I think it looks worse than it actually is. But to me, when you're dribbling to the basket, that's a natural reaction. Watch Brown reaches in, and Boyd just reaches reaches that arm up. Just happens to get him in the head. I think the officials are going to agree with my assessment. Doesn't we got have one finger for the extra free throw to try to complete a three point play. And that's what Mohorcic will do at the free throw line. And they do agree with my assessment, which, you know, when I coached, they, they didn't agree with my assessment <laughs> very often. So <laughs> it was well done on your part, Mohorcic. At the free throw line and connects on the three point play. He'll come out of the game. Jai is back in. Very good minutes for Dushan Mohorcic. Serbia replaced by Senegal. And it is a 32 point lead for Illinois State. Banks on the baseline is fouled. We uh, were talking up some of the players on this team that alley oop to Iman Washington. And there were others too. A thunderous one by Strong, one of just a few juniors on this team. Horn had a jam in this game. There's been a lot of highlights to choose from if you're that Illinois State staff. 67 35 is the lead, 8.46 to go. Tom, this game could go one of two ways right now from officiating. It could get very tight, and they will call every touch anytime somebody puts a hand on a player, or they'll just swallow the whistle and will continue to play, and it could get rougher. My guess is it'll get a, bit, a little bit tighter officiating-wise, and players will have to adjust to it. That one tapped away by Jai off to the races is strong against Harvey lays it up and he's fouled and will go to the free throw line. Yeah I could see that based on what we just saw maybe I, I think so I mean that, and that's actually a pretty good foul by Harvey he knew he was beat so reach in don't give him the layup make sure he earns it at the free throw line. But before the elbow. That got absent Brown. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because, you know, you get a game like this, you get a play like the Brown Boyd, and all of a sudden it becomes chippy. So good, good officiating will eliminate. And especially as we'll see these two teams together tomorrow. 69 35, the Redbirds lead the Salukis. Devonzo goes in strong against Jai and could not connect. The defense continues to be one of many things Illinois State is doing right. Horn for three. DJ Horn. Wow. That is just terrific ball movement and then individual step back skill work by DJ Horn. Whistle and talking to DJ Horn right there with the foul. And that's four on DJ Horn. He has 17 points, Z, and he's knocked down three threes. Well, DJ Horn with the step back, and he is feeling it. And he's making sure that Southern Illinois feels it. And he's going to get called for a technical for talking a little bit too much. And that's a situation where DJ Horn's excited. He's having a great day. His team is playing well. And he's got to relax. Good movement by 
Dan Muller to pull him out, let him relax a little bit. He's still letting his voice be heard over there as Harvey makes the first of two. Dan Muller talking to him, and he also acknowledged the officials. Said, nope, you're going to go right back over that direction. I love DJ Horn. He still thinks he's going to stay in the game. They've got a sub for him at, at midcourt. And and he's walking back. He's saying, and he's whispering in his coach's ear, oh, come on, let me let me in. Let me have a part of this. He just waved him over again. <laughs> Said, no, I want you over there for, for a bit. What a game he's had, though. 17 points. Three steals, three assists, four rebounds. DJ Horn fueling this Illinois State team. There have been contributions across the board as Harvey lets go of three and knocks it down. And Tom, that's the difference between a player and a coach. A player is playing for today. Dan Muller is playing for tomorrow right now. And now a foul is called. Brian Mullins doesn't like it. Oh, you're right. The uh, SIU side is not happy today. These two teams got to see each other tomorrow. It's frustrating right now for the Salukis. Illinois State having a day in Carbondale. We are back in Carbondale, and before planning your trip to St. Louis or to follow the 2021 State Farm MVC Men's Basketball Championship, be sure to download the Arch Madness app or visit archmadness.com. Both resources have all the information you need to know about the tournament schedule, hotel accommodations, and other fun events during the tournament. Log on to archmadness.com or download the app on your phone today. We're back at SIU. It is all Illinois State this afternoon, up by 32 points, 72 to 40. What a surprising effort by this Illinois State team looking for its third Valley win. Well, they came out with the highest level of energy I've seen them with this year. And that guy right there, Jai, misses the three, actually huge in the first half. Harvey. The fake inside, the toss, the basket for Filowich. Filowich with a double double today. He has 13 points and 10 rebounds. It's Fleming finding the open man short on that three. It was Reeves. Open three for Plankin, no. And Illinois State has put on a show here today and they'll have to find it in themselves to do it again tomorrow. Ooh, what a play underneath <laughs> by Reeves. Oh, the circus has come to Carbondale. Reeves. I mean, they have had some highlight reel here today. Brown with the miss. Filowich can't get the rebound. It's corralled by Boyd. Gets it back. Dedrick Boyd gets around Banks. Fleming. They whip it around to Boyd who attacks. Dedrick Boyd with the basket. The ball is moving. It's not sticking in anybody's hands. And I think that's really been a huge key offensively for Illinois State all day long. Under six minutes. What do you do now if you're SIU? How do you handle this to come back tomorrow? Well, you, you try you try and build with little things. Just an offensive execution on, on a certain play. Try and regain some of your confidence from an offensive perspective. For Plank and travel. And you can learn some things still today. There's still 542 to go. Learn a couple of things about your team and your opponent. There'll be plenty of video to go through. Do you go through video of this game? Is you, you burn it. <laughs> you throw you, you take the videotape, you throw it in the trash can, little gasoline. Light it up, you burn it, you forget about it, and you come back tomorrow because it's really simple, I think, for Southern Illinois. You got to make this more of a half court game. And I, I think Illinois State set the tone with a frantic pace early. Fleming, look at that. He goes up for the layup, missed it, ends up getting the loose ball. Reeves, no, and the rebound, Harvey. And they're just quicker to the basketball. They're just doing everything. Harvey connects with the three. 
Harvey's knocked down a couple of them here today and now has eight points. Reeves on the other end, up and no. SIU wearing the black jerseys for blackout cancer. Harvey can't make it that time. And that's, of course, a huge win for SIU today. Partnering with Southern Illinois Healthcare Foundation, continuing this program. Men's and women's basketball program started in 2016 with blackout cancer. And the miss there, rebound to Harvey. Four and a half to go. Brown to Harvey. We're planking out there with Brown, Filowich, and Banks. And now a whistle and a foul on the floor. Reeves makes it easy for the official. You put two hands on the dribbler, automatic call. Colby Long comes into the game for Banks. As Fleming checks out for Illinois State. And Strong in there with Sissoko and Boyd. Along with Andrews and Reeves. Trent Brown at the free throw line. 30 point lead for Illinois State. Missouri Valley Conference, you can never overlook an opponent. Some big time talent and coaches in this league as Brown makes the free throws. Arch Madness is going to be fascinating. It is going to be fun, and I'm sure we'll see some upsets like we did a year ago. You will. And this Illinois State team is going to be playing on Thursday, but as we've seen, you got to be careful with them. Reeves in the miss. And here is Harvey for SIU. Long season opening and lays it in. Colby Long with the bucket. Well, miscommunication by Illinois State. You talk about a year, kind of what a, a year of difference it makes. Drake last year, the underdog against Northern Iowa upset him. This year, Drake's going to be the hunted. Northern Iowa struggling without A.J. Green. Ben Jacobson will have him ready for the tournament, no doubt. Harvey in traffic, got foul. Foul called on Sissoko. Yeah, Loyola really took it to Drake. We'll take a look at that schedule again before we go. Here it has been all Illinois State at... Back at Banterra Center in Carbondale. The Valley action today. Loyola just takes it to Drake. 81-54. They're just about to tip off in Springfield. Bradley at Missouri State. I'll be there for the second game tomorrow. Valparaiso at Northern Iowa tonight at 7. Let's take a look at the standings and see where this all goes. Sponsored by Zervita. Loyola now at the top. Drake at 10-2. And look at that middle group right there, Z. Missouri State, Indiana State, both very good teams. Evansville's had a good year. Uh, Todd Licklider in his first full season has the Purple Aces in, in one of the biggest turnarounds in Missouri Valley Conference history. They didn't win a single game last year, already won six. But you're trying to get into that top six so you don't play on Thursday night. So, some interesting matchups the next couple of weeks. And, you know, Bradley right there trying to make sure they don't play on Thursday as the two time defending conference tournament champion. How about you mentioned the Valparaiso at UNI today? Valparaiso, 0 and 14 in Cedar Falls, trying to break the skid. This might be the year to do it. Valparaiso playing very well right now. Maybe it is. This one is out of bounds. It'll go back the other way for SIU. Illinois State will play here tomorrow at Southern Illinois, right back on the Valley on ESPN at 3. Then they go to Bradley, and then back-to-backs against Northern Iowa as Harvey lets it go and is missed there. Before Arch Madness begins for the Redbirds, and as it sits right now, they're at the bottom of the conference standings, but you can't mess with them. 
I mean, as we've seen here today, they can explode. Reeves. Now offensively, when they get it going and the ball is moving, they can knock down threes at a high clip. Strong and saw that coming and throws it down. Defensively, just outstanding all day long. That they have a steal for Strong. And they've had now eight steals in this game. And he reads the passer's eyes, jumps the passing lane. Strong with a strong finish. No pun intended. 78 51. And for the Salukis, trying to figure out where the offense has gone, scoring 52 points in their last game against Missouri State. And now Illinois State holding him to 51, nearing the two minute mark. Banks held up. Long. Now Banks caught in traffic again. Harvey will try in the lane. Finds Banks, and that one is knocked out of bounds, but a foul is called. You know, Tom, you got a challenge for each of these coaches when this final horn blows for Southern Illinois and, and Coach Mullins it's you know how do you get your kids to pick their head up you know after a game like this you hang in your head and you got to get your guys ready to go for tomorrow and just the opposite for Dan Muller their heads are, are hitting the top of the roof so you got to try and bring them down to make them understand this is how hard you have to work tomorrow to get a sweep and go home basically escaping the cellar. Nick Stottleman out there on the floor the freshman from Rockford Illinois was handling the basketball there but a foul was called and it'll go back the other way for SIU. Mahorchic was called for the foul. And he comes out of the game. Very good half for Mahorchich. Played all in the second half. Five points, five rebounds in nine minutes. That's good, efficient work. Stottleman, the freshman, still in there guarding Banks. And a whistle. Also, Eric Butler is in the game for SIU. We're going to see a lot of different players, and that's because they're missing that man. Their best player is Marcus Damask. Still out with a foot injury. In fact, this is the eighth game, Z, that he's missing with that left foot injury right there. Well, the good news for Saluki fans, they did take off his boot earlier this week. The doctor took a look at it. He is progressing, but the question is, is how quickly is he progressing? So, you know, the first step is to get him out of the boot, get him running up and down, jogging, and, and see how it feels. So, you know, next week is going to be a big week for this young man in determining how quickly he will come back if at all. Marcus Damask averaging 16.3 points per game before he was out with the injury. They consider him officially week to week. Cut off to Stottleman. Three point attempt is long there. And all the way down to Harvey for the lay-in. One minute to play. It's been all Illinois State today. You are 100% correct on that. 78-55. And on that note, our players of the game can't say enough great things about DJ Horn. He was fantastic. Players of the game, a presentation of State Farm with surprisingly great rates. State Farm is the real deal. You can get personalized service from your local agent or use the State Farm mobile app when you're on the go. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Horn was setting the tone on both ends of the floor. Obviously a tremendous score, but when he plays like Mr. Nasty on the defensive end, which he did here with four steals, he really picks this team up and he keeps that intensity level where it needs to be. It has been quite a performance for this Illinois State team and DJ Horn is one of the better players in the league really. 
I mean, it, he put on a show today. He's over there chatting up. Looks like he's ready to go play another 40. <laughs> he is some player. He's fun to watch. Well, he hasn't played in the last seven or eight minutes. And, and I know he wanted to play, but his coach explained it to him. Hey, we got some guys, let, let some other guys who haven't had a chance to play much get some minutes because we're going to need you tomorrow. Because I'll guarantee you one thing Southern Illinois will come back with a lot of fire in tomorrow's game. I don't doubt that. Some long faces over at the SIU bench as Andrews makes the free throw. Foul was called on Dembele. Austin Andrews with his third point of the game. He has five rebounds today in 10 minutes. The young man from Detroit has really made the most of his minutes. Played well in the first half when the game was still on the line. Yeah, he and Mohorchich, very good off the bench. Banks. And that three is long by Cross. And Illinois State is going to wrap this game, putting up 80, allowing only 55. And posting its third win in conference play in very impressive fashion for Southern Illinois. Has to shake it off quickly. 24 hours later, they'll be tipping off against this Illinois State team once again. An 80 to 55 win for Dan Muller and the Illinois State Redbirds on the road at SIU. Just total domination from the opening tip to the end. Dan Muller had his guys ready to go. Played with a lot of energy, a lot of heart, shut him down defensively. And Southern Illinois still looking for someone to pick up the scoring slack with the absence of Marcus Damask. We'll have more Valley on ESPN action tomorrow, February 14th. It'll be Bradley at Missouri State. Coverage begins at 3 p.m. Central, the Valley on ESPN. Here in Carbondale, it was all Redbirds. And for Rich Savosek, I'm Tom Ackerman saying so long from Banterra Center. 80 to 55, Illinois State wins it over SIU. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Thanks for watching today's contest. This has been a presentation of ESPN.